Remember now, prayers tonight, our dear friend and leader, Brother Dick. And beseech you to show your loving kindness to him in his sickness. Help him in his affliction. For thou, Lord, art our only strength. Thy will be done. Amen. Amen. How is Brother Deacon? Oh, little change. Silas, you will sit with him again tonight, won't you? Could you take over from Sarah at nine o'clock? Yes, of course, William. Is that you? Come quickly. Brother Deacon's dead. It is your knife, Silas. Is it? it? Yes, but the lock was forced with this knife. Our church money was kept in there. What have you done, Silas? I know nothing about any money. God will clear me. I found it. It was in Silas's dwelling, behind the loom. It's empty. William, tell them. For nine years we've gone together. Have you ever known me tell a lie? I told you I was asleep. The thief must have come then. Asleep? When you had undertaken to watch over our beloved brother Deacon? Not asleep. It's a kind of fit. A visitation. Tell them, William. You've seen how it takes me. We know all about your visitation, Silas. Have you considered there might be visitations from the devil? Let us pray and draw lots, so that God may show us the truth. Lots declare you to be guilty. God has spoken for them. I remember now. William, you asked me if you could borrow my knife. You must remember, about a week ago. Yes. We were weaving together. I'd taken it out to cut a strap for you. I left it lying there. You said you wanted it for something. I have a knife of my own. Why would I want to borrow yours? Silas! There is no place for you in this church. We cast you out from among us. Brethren, let us pray for this miserable sinner. It's lies. William is lying. He must have stolen the money.
I'll say one thing for him. Regular as clockwork. Never misses a week. Well, you can't hold that against him. I can hold nothing against him. Hardly know the man. I know I see. Fifteen years here in Ravelo, no one's had more than three words with him. Except your missus, Ben. This is a fine piece of work, Master Marner. I can find no fault with this. I have fresh yarn ready for you. Or you'll take a ball of brass before you set out again. Wash your face. All these silly stories about you and your spells and giving a child rickets with a bad look and such nonsense as I'm ashamed to speak of. seen anything like it. His eyes were set like a dead man's. I spoke to him, not a word back. He's stiff as iron. That man's dead. And I'm halfway there myself with fright. But just as I'm about to take full hold of him and lie him down, which would be the right thing to do with a dead man, he turns his eyes on me, comes back to the living. And his hands went loose enough to let drop what he'd been hanging on so tight to. Five gold sovereigns. I was just about to kneel down, help him pick him up, but he was too quick for me. He got him back in his fist before I could move nearly. Now, I don't know... How it's possible for Master Manor to be alive and dead at the same time. But it's true. Now that is a fit. He's had they well, many times. It's no fit. You ever seen anyone go off in a fit and not fall down? You say he didn't fall down? No. Just stood there. You see, a fit's the same thing as a stroke takes away all use of a man's limbs and throws him on the parish. Well, if it's not a fit, then what be it? Well, I bird, there's such a thing as a man's soul breaking loose from his body, going in and out like a bird out of a nest and then back.
Same master mana we're talking about. Same who cured Sally Oates. Made her sleep like a baby. And her heart was beating fit to burst out of her body. The docs are not able to do a thing about it. So? He's got a knowledge of herbs. Many folk have. Yeah, what else has he got the knowledge of besides? Well, he knows how to weave a fair length of linen cloth best in these parts. Make no mistake. He knows how to charge for it and all. There's some who say he could buy up bigger men than himself. Lord. Snell, some service man. On my way, sir. This will not be his first call of the night. You can bet on that. Your luck today, Mr. Cass. I don't mean you'd have some winners to brag about. Just fill it up, man. As I was saying, Master Marner can <sighs> buy up bigger men than you. Settle your bills soon enough. Did you deny him Christian charity? If he was a Christian, but what kind of a Christian can he be? There's never even six foot inside a church. Master Manor may live poor, but that's because he's miserly. I've seen the kind of money he takes home from his rounds. I've seen that. I'd say he's got a fine sight of money laid by over the years. Slow as an old woman. Master Godfrey's been asking for you. Where is Dunphy? He's out dicing and cockfighting, I thrash him big as he is. At least his mother's not alive to see what he's grown into. for me these days, too. My elder son and heir. Idlers and wasters, both of you. I'm going to bed. Good evening, father. Drunk again. I told that landlord not to give you any more credit. Then allow me enough to live as I should! I'll not warn you anymore. I'll have you thrown out of this house and you can starve to death for all I can. I hear you want to speak to me, brother. If you're sober enough to listen, always listen to my elders and betters. I must have that money back. Hmm? What money? You know damn well what money. Father's money, the rent money I took from Fowler. If I don't make it good by the end of the week, Father will have the bailiff throw him off his land. Poor Fowler. Dunstan, I must have that money back. I thought you gave me that money out of brotherly love. So, out of brotherly love... 
You'll pay it back. <laughs> Good night, brother. I said good night. You're not going to bed yet. I'm sorry, Godfrey. It's late. And as you've so acutely observed, I've had a little bit too much to drink. We'll talk in the morning. I'll tell Father that you've taken the money. You wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? But if there's any telling to be done, you'd lose much more than me. Never mind about some miserable tenant. You think about yourself. Oh, yes. If I was to tell Father what I know about you, his eldest son and heir, I'd slip into your place as easy as could be. It won't come to that. You'll find the money. I tell you, I have no money. But borrow it. Old Dr. Kimball should be good for another hundred. He won't lend it more. I'll come on it in the morning. Brotherly love will find a way. Come on, man. There's your answer. Sell wildfire. Never. Just look at him. Beautiful horse. Just think what he'll fetch. I can't wait. I need the money now. I'll ride him to the hunt this morning. Bryce and Keating will be there for sure. They'll be willing to bid for him. I can't go today. I've business to see to. Oh, I see. All right, then. I'll take him. Miss Lameter, my brother and I were talking about you only last evening. Isn't that his horse you're riding? My horse now. We did a swap. Good. Good. You got the best of the bargain. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little deal to settle. Wildfire made up the difference. I did good for a favour. I'd been looking a mare over at Jortin's rare bit of blood. And I'll keep Wildfire now I've got him. As good as they come at a fence. Mind you. I nearly took an offer of 150 for him a couple of weeks ago. Well, you must have a good reason for turning down a bid like that. Half as much again as the horse is worth, wouldn't you say, Bryce? I wouldn't give 150 for that horse. <laughs> You're not being asked. Um, I might stretch to 110. 120, Dunsty. Final offer. Done? Make sure you deliver him safe and sound at Batley Stables. After I've shown what he can do, I'll put his price up for you. That's a favour, isn't it? <laughs>
So, this is what all the money goes on. You just bring me the money. I spend it how I like. I give you money. It would be if you didn't spend it all on this stuff. seen a guy to money he takes out from his rounds, and I'd say he's got a fine sight of money laid by.
the miner. Robbed. I've been robbed. I want the constable. The justice. Jim Rockney, if you stole my money, give me back. I won't meddle on you. Give me back and I'll let you. I'll let you have a guinea. Stay your gun if he's off his head. Me steal your money, I'll be busy your eye. You're in, Jim. You've gone mad. Yep. You come and sit down here by the fire. You dry your side. You're wet through. Now then, what's happened? You've been robbed, you say. Now what of? My money, all my money. Oh, well, how much money? Two hundred and seventy-two pounds, twelve shillings and sixpence. I counted it just last night. It's all my work these past fifteen years. It's all I have. Someone mm. broke into the cottage. I needed some twine. I've a new piece of work to set up on the loom in the morning. It slipped my mind when I was in the village earlier. I was only out twenty minutes. What kind of thieves going to be hanging round the stone bits on a night like this? What I vote is, two on us, go with you and fetch the constable. Get him to a point and step it is. Okay. I shall see what we can find. The way this mist's coming down, you'll not see anything tonight. I'm not a man to be a fear of mist. Let's just can't sit here and do nothing. It's no right accusing me! Haven't I been sitting here all night drinking my can? Come on, Jem. The man's lost everything. And what will the justices say if they are respectable men like us as information of a robbery given to him and took no steps? Come in. What kept you, man? Men from the village. They're all out hunting a thief. Huh? Someone broke into one of the estate cottages. Uh huh. They reckon it was one of them tinkers. Them that's been hanging about the village these past weeks. They find him? Nah, no sign. What time did my brother come home last night? He didn't. No, he didn't come home at all. The squire's not too happy. He reckons he's up to his old tricks again. He won't be sorry to see the back of him. Oh, we did our best, Marner. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of us, we ain't had a wink of sleep all night. He could be 20 miles away by now. Well, well we're all very sorry, but... I mean, look at it this way. I mean, you'll be no worse off than other poor folks. I mean, there's some who are, who are crippled. They have to live on the parish. Yeah, right. Well, if anything does turn up, we'll let you know. Good day, Master Marner. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Set on her. So did Lameter. So did she. And I'd say half the village knows that. I've changed your mind. There's no other woman I want to marry. Well, ask the girl. Merry Christmas, Lameter. Just that's it. Looking forward to seeing you all on New Year's Eve. I trust you are well, Miss Lameter. Quite well, thank you, and I hope I find you the same. No word of your son. I suppose we'll see him again when he has courage enough to show his face. After all, Cass, this is the season of forgiveness.
I did my Christmas baking yesterday, Master Marner, and the lard cakes turned out better than average, as my Ben and all the boys agreed, didn't you, Aaron? Aaron, show your face to Master Marner this minute, you naughty boy. Ah, that's better. Isn't he a picture, Master Marner? Ben and me spoil him. I know we shouldn't, but he's got such a way with him. Aaron, come out this minute. Now, I hope you'll accept some, Master Marner. It'd please me if you take the plate. He can sing like a bird, Master Marner. Ben's taught him a Christmas carol. Aaron, will you sing it for Master Marner? Come on, stand up straight and sing your carol. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Saviour was born on Christmas Day. We'll finish it properly like you learned it. To save us all from Satan's power when we had gone astray. All tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. All tidings of comfort and joy. So they didn't find the thief. But that's the old year. There's a new one coming up. It might bring you luck. I don't know. Have you got a Sunday suit? My advice is get yourself one. Mr. Mace is a fine tailor. Get yourself a Sunday suit. Come to church and be a bit neighbourly. to come out in weather like this. If you slight a woman, you must pay for it, Godfrey. Sharp girl. The parson's glass is empty. I glass in my house tonight. 
Do you want to make history for me? <laughs> they say it's a very severe winter, Miss Nancy. But if anybody tells me that, I've got an answer for them. Haven't we seen the roses in bloom on New Year's Eve? None prettier than Lana's roses. Eh, hey, Godfrey? Nothing to say to that, Godfrey. I mean, I'd have something to say if I were a young fellow again. I must say, Lamita, I'm hard-pressed to remember a sample to match your daughter. Oh, no offence, madam. I didn't know you when you were Miss Lamita's aid. <laughs> One dance with you matters more to me than any other pleasure. No, I didn't know that. It's true. In that case, I don't wish to hear it. Whatever it is I've done in the past to offend you, I can change. I'm always glad to see anyone change for the better. But it would be best if no change were needed in the first place.
want the doctor. Is he here? What's this? There's a woman dying. I think she's dead in the snow by my door. Father, we mustn't upset our guests. I'll see to this. Whose child? Is this the woman's child? Will one of you take charge of the child for No, the no. I can't part with her. I can't let her go. She's come to me. I have a right to keep her. <laughs> Dr. Kimball, it's a bad night, but I'll come with you. Miss Nancy, if you'll excuse me. Father, see to the guests. Emil, hit on, man, hit on. God teach her, everyone. take the child to the parish in the morning. Who says so? They can't make me. Why, you don't want to keep her, do you? An old bachelor like you. I do. Till anyone shows they have a right to her. It's a lone thing, and I'm a lone thing. I don't know. I'm dazed. My money's gone, and this has come. It's come to me. Come to me. Poor little thing. Here, let me give you something towards finding it some clothes. Coming out in weather like this in your dancing shoes. What will Miss Nancy say? <laughs> Miss Nancy, time for resolution. What do you resolve? First, I must ask you a question. What do you desire to see in a husband? And if I tell you... I resolve to be that man before the year is through. Above took care of her, Master Marner, and brought her to you, like a little starved robin. You keep the little one, Master Marner. <laughs> 
Never mind who says different. Now, you're likely to be a bit vexed and bothered by her for a while. Her being so little, and you being new to it all. Uh, if it weren't a sin to wish the boys made different, bless them. I'd have been glad of one of them to have been a little girl. I could have taught her knitting and sewing and everything. But I'll teach her Master Marna when she's old enough. And meanwhile, I'll come and take care of her for you. I want to do things for her myself. I can learn. I'm used to finding on my own. She's mine, like you said. Of course she is. I'll be glad if you'll show me. Thank you kindly. Only, I want her to know it's me who cared for her from the first. Oh, that she will. You've no need to buy more than a pair of shoes for her just for now. I've all these little things the boys used to wear, and you welcome. I've no men who are wonderfully handy with little children. What are you going to call her? I haven't thought yet. Parson can't christen her without a name. Christen? What do you mean, christen? The christening service in the church, standing at the font, with the water and the prayers. Had you forgotten? My mother's name was Hepzibah. The parson can christen her that. We won't if it's not a proper Christian name. It's a Bible name. We've no call to speak against it, then. But it's a hard name for a little girl. She told me when she was small, she was called Epi. That's not hard, is it? Epi. Epi. You'll have to smack her, Master Marner. It's a hard thing, I know, but you've got to do your duty. Oh, shut her in the coal hole. Oh. 
Well, that's what I used to do with my errand. Only takes once or twice. I don't hold with punishment. Nobody's got the right. It sours a person. teach you a lesson. <laughs> no, no, I do. Yes, I do, I do. It's naughty. <laughs> Epi mustn't run away. It's naughty to cut with scissors and run away. That's why Danny must put you in the, <laughs> yes, in the car. Salt. Little Robin. Let's put some salt in. Do it up.
Odium's counted blessing that Hans is getting over it. She will be better, Lamita. The doctor's in no doubt. But it seems you and I will never be grandfathers. That's a fact of it. It's a great pity. Another son. Dante! Tell me where, if you can. I'm not sure I want to think of a brood of little dances. God knows what tricks they'd pull. Take a bit to dig in. But I could do it if you want a bit of garden. I wasn't thinking of you doing it, Father. It's heavy work. Aaron will do it. He does a lot of gardening work in his spare time. I have to meet Osgood and the surveyors to talk about the Meadowlands. You decided to purchase them? I think so. It would mean a lot more work for you. You've never done dairying before. Oh, that's no bad thing. Hard work never killed a man. So you'll be out late? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to take a ride round with me later on. I don't know. I, I thought I might go and see Father. He's lonely since the squire died. He used to enjoy their talks. Well, we can call in on the way back. I thought... I have to pass by old Marner's cottage. I'm thinking of ordering some new building to be done to it. I'll call back later for you in the carriage. Good afternoon, Squire. Good afternoon, Effie. Good afternoon, child. How's your schooling coming along? I've been considering Mana. This place, it's not up to the mark. Not for the child, I mean. She's outgrowing it.
I'm going to build on two new rooms. You'll have your bedroom separate. It's high time. The men will start work in a day or two. What do you think of that? It's good of you, Mr. Cass, but I'm not sure I can afford a bigger place. The same rent, Mark. As for furniture, Mrs. Cass will send a few things along when the place is ready. Perhaps Eppie would like to come and choose for herself. She could come up to the house and look around. I don't know, sir. It's not right. You've done so much for us already. Everything here. Nonsense, ma'am. Besides, it'll be good for her. And it'll please my wife. Godfrey, don't ask me again. We've talked about it so many times in the past. I know she's a lovely child, honest and decent, but she isn't ours. And we must leave it like that. But we need a child. This house needs a child. We have each other. Isn't that enough? I won't ask you again. Besides, what about Myrna? She's been his for 15 years. Do you think he'd agree to part with her? What does a man of his class know about fatherly feelings? Eppy, I put the lavender here. All right. It's good, Aaron. Father? Is my mother pretty? You know what I've told you. Yes, but before then, before she fell in the snow and died, do you think she was pretty? I could see she'd had a hard life, I think. She'd been ill some time, the doctor said, but I think she must have been very pretty. How many times have you asked me that? <laughs> I know. But I like to hear it. I keep trying to have a picture of her before that night. Luke in a mirror. You were her daughter, I think. But perhaps I took after my father. She was married, wasn't she? I've seen the ring you took from her finger. When I get married, I'll wear the same ring. since yesterday. They're draining it. Squire wants to stop flooding in new meadows. Come on.
some miserable tenant you think about yourself. <laughs> if I was to tell Father what I know about you, he's out there son of there. found his body in the stone pits. He must have drowned all those years ago. Dunstan was the man who robbed Silas Marner. Oh, Godfrey. They've taken his skeleton to the inn. The money's been returned to the weaver. There's more. Forgive me, Nancy. Forgive me. Everything comes to light in the end. All the secrets. I have to tell you. That woman Marna found in the snow, Eppie's mother, that wretched woman, was my wife. Do you think I'd have refused to have her? If you'd taken her as you ought, she would have loved me for her mother, and you would have been happier with me. But if I told you, you wouldn't have married me, Nancy. I can't say. I should never have married anyone else. I wasn't worth doing wrong for. Nothing is in this world. If you can find it in your heart to forgive me, we can take Epi, and I'll be plain and honest for the rest of my life. You must do your duty and acknowledge her and provide for her. And I'll do my part and pray to God to make her love me. <laughs> takes no hold on me now. I wonder if it ever could again. It might if I ever lost you, Epi. I might come to think I was forsaken again and lose the feeling that God was good to me. It's a great comfort to me that you have your money back. It was one of my family who stole it, and I'm beholden to you for that, but much more than that. None of this was your fault, Mr. Cass. Besides, I'm not sure I'm sorry I lost it. It kept me working, and that's what I hung on to all those years. But you're old now. Wouldn't you like to rest? You can put the money in investments and live on the interest. It'll last much longer if you only have yourself to keep. Oh, I've no fear of want. We've got all we want, eh, Epi? Except a garden. You love a garden? I do too. 
There's a large garden at the Red House. I'll come to the point, Marna. Mrs. Cass and I have no children. No one to benefit from our good home. We should like to have Epi. Treat her in every way as our own child. You could always come and see her, of course. Epi, my child, speak. I won't stand in your way. Thank Mr. and Mrs. Cass. Thank you, Mum. Thank you, sir. But I can't leave my father. And I don't want to be a lady. Thank you all the same. I must tell you, Marna. Epi is my child. Yes, Epi. Your mother was my wife. It can be proved. So I have a natural claim on her that must stand before anyone else. Why didn't you say so 16 years ago? That night, before I came to love her. Now it's like... Taking the heart out of my body. I know. I was wrong. I've repented for it. I'm glad to hear it. But you can't take away 16 years. You come here now and say I'm her father. It's me she's been calling father ever since she could first say the word. It's not as if she's going to be taken away from you. She'll be nearby. You can see her often. She'll feel just the same towards you. The same? Eppy and me eat the same food, drink out of the same cup, think the same thoughts from one day's end to another. You'd cut us in two. I'd have thought if you had any real feelings for her, you'd see it was for her good. Think of the opportunities you'll have. Of course, I'm sorry to hurt you after all you've done. But she is my child, it is my duty to take care of her, and I intend to do my duty. I'll say no more. Speak to the child. I won't stand in her way. Epi. My dear. Of course, you must always show your love and gratitude to Silas, who's been like a father to you. But you'll come to love us as well. From now on, I'll do everything in my power for you. You'll be my only child, and you'll have the best of mothers in my wife. You'll be a treasure to me. We won't want anything else in our lives. Well, you're saying, Epi. Do you want to lead a poor life when you could have everything of the best? How oh, can you see me dressing up and riding in a gig and sitting in the top pew in church? Do you think I care for that? You do have a duty to your lawful father, Epi. Don't forget that. It hasn't been easy for him to come here tonight. Don't turn your back on him. I've got more than one father. I always thought of a little home where he'd sit in the corner and I'd look after him and do everything for him. I can't think of any other home. I wasn't brought up to be a lady. I wouldn't know how. I like working folks and their food and their ways. And if I marry... I fancy he'll be a working man. I'll live with father. Help me take care of him. We must go. We wish you.
you both well. We will come and visit again. It's late now. Ended. Yes. I wanted to pass for childless once. Now I shall pass for childless against my will. Godfrey, I'd rather no one except us knew about this. It can't do any good. She's nice. Pretty, isn't she? Yes. She is. Oh, oh Father. If only things could go on a long, long way. Just as they are. Things will change, Eppy. Whether we like it or no. I like to think you'd have someone else besides me. Somebody young and strong to look after you. Would you like me to be married, Father? I'll not be the man to say no, Eppie. Master Manor, and you'll never know the rights of it, but it doesn't mean there aren't rights, for all it's dark to you and me. No. Since that child was sent to me and I've come to love her as myself, I've had light enough to trust by. And now she says she'll never leave me. I think I'll trust till I die. Okay. 